Okay, and, and the final thing I wanted to say, just for the announcements, is Friday, paperwork was submitted to the Republicans in the House and Senate for their signatures to be sent to the Attorney General uh, Barr for a criminal charge against Janet Mills. Yeah! Janet has to go! So if you don't think that some of the legislature has been hearing you, we have. And we have spoken. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of the uh, speakers that we've got here. We've got Ken, we've got Ken Graves over here that's going to be speaking as our uh, keynote speaker. He'll be uh, doing the final prayer for us as well. If anybody has seen Rick Savage, can you have him come forward and let, let me know he's here? He's also one of our guest speakers. And the most imp important are the people who have been affected by the... Di the Mm, dictatorship and the tyranny of the woman over in that house. So thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the day. So I, I understand you weren't going to take any questions, but can you tell me who submitted the paperwork? Who started it? There you go. There you go. There is a troop. So our next speaker, our next speaker is uh, hopefully our next governor. We have we have Governor LePage on the phone. The governor is in quarantine, so he can't get out. But um, he has graciously agreed to to. He's in the parking lot here somewhere. If anybody wants to go by and wave at him, um, but he has graciously agreed to um, address the crowd. So hang on. Oh. Hello everyone, it's a real pleasure to be here. Please continue to be safe, but continue to push back against this tyrant in the, in the Blaine House. It is outrageous. Maine has been voted the number one most vulnerable state in America because of our age, because we depend on small business, and we depend on tourism. And 14 day quarantine is unconstitutional. In, 20, in 2014, I tried to quarantine the Ebola nurse and I lost in court. And Janet Mills was the attorney general at the time and she fought against and now she wants to quarantine everybody. It is outrageous. And we need to fight back. She needs, she needs to open up the state of Wisconsin, Texas, Florida, and Georgia have opened up and the virus has not increased. And therefore we need to continue to push back against this government. She needs to come to her senses and let us earn a living. And with that, I ask you all to stay very safe, keep pushing back, and maybe, maybe they will learn something from this and they'll open up before the end of the summer. So thank you very much and have a nice day. We want Paul! I think the governor's, one of the governor's campaign slogans was, if it is to be, it's up to me. And I think this is a, a perfect indication of, of that time is now. If, if things are going to change, we're going to have to change them. It obviously isn't going to happen from the Blaine House. So um, our next guest speaker is Mr. Savage from the Sunday River Brewing Company. What a turnout, you guys. We gotta give a big shout out to Callis because they grabbed themselves yesterday and they opened up. That's what the rest of Maine needs to do. Okay, if we don't stick together and open up, they think they're winning. We need to open up. If you know somebody, tell them to open up, go support them. Stop spending your money back with Walmart and giving it back to China. 
okay? We need to get her out of here. I would say we start a petition. I know we could get probably at least a million vote, uh, a million petition sign signatures, okay? We need to do that. We need to get her out of here. We can't have her for another two plus years. It's not going to work, okay? Maine needs to stand strong, you guys, and open up. Okay, she's killing all the small Even as a small shop up in the county. She's across from Walmart. She's watching people go in every day. Her place, they have to call up. She has to make it and bring it out in their car. She's worked 50-something days straight to save her business. It's ridiculous, okay? We shouldn't have to have rallies like this to be treated like respect, with respect, as business people. We need to have a voice in Maine, and it starts right here. We need Governor LePage back. He did a great job for Maine. My brother and myself just offered him a house lot in Bethel free. And we offered him a job and his wife at the brew pub if they want it. We need people that have business sense running these businesses. Look at the money they're involved in with these businesses, you guys. They are the highest... They have the most employees in the state of Maine, okay? She can't run her business, okay? She's trying to run ours. We got three great candidates now that we're trying to get in Washington. Dale Kraft, honestly, is an amazing, amazing man. If you look at his life history, that man deserves to be in Washington. And honestly, we got two other candidates that are equally good. We have really good people going in, you guys. And I, I you know, I'm voting for Dale Kraft just because of his business relations and what he's done in the Elizabeth Falls area and the big family man that he is. We're a big family ourselves. We have multiple businesses. We didn't have to do this. I could have shut my restaurant down for three months and been fine. It's not about that. Okay? They start doing this now for three or four months. They're already talking about doing it in the fall. Okay? In the fall, it's going to be six months. And then they're already talking that we'll let me be back to normal. Screw that. I'm back to normal. She singled us out and got it into court in less than 23 hours yesterday. So she got an injunction against us with a judge that she put in Oxford County Court seven months ago. So obviously they're not very smart people because they've already lost their case. Maine needs to open back up, you guys, and that's what I got to say. Thank you. Thank you very much for. I was in a conversation a bit ago with uh, with uh, congressional candidate um, Adrian Bennett, and I asked her if she would be willing to just sort of give us a perspective of what she has seen in terms of impact to to businesses and community, and she has graciously agreed to do that. So, uh, Adrian Bennett. All right, this is not about me. This is not about us as congressional candidates. This is all about every single one of you here. And I'm up here so I, because I can see all of you from here, and hopefully you can see me now too. But Kit, great sign. Mills is destroying families. Not only, you know, many of us here believe. What's first, God, our families, and our country? families in our country and we are here to fight for our rights and we need her to hear us and let me tell you she has heard us she started to relax some of the guidelines but it's not enough so we need to keep need to keep pushing we need to keep the pressure on her and it is so good to see so many of you here again today so real quick let's Start a little chant and Mills has got to go. Let's do it just for a few seconds. Mills has got to go. 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 We want Paul. You know, the sound of your voices is a beautiful thing. And our constitutional rights, let's make no mistake about it, she is attacking them every single day. She is attacking our religious liberties. And I want to thank Ken Graves. Ken Graves, where are you?
thank you so much for doing what you're doing. Calvary Chapel, thank you. You know, I'm signing on to an amicus brief to that to that court case because I believe that we need to do what's right. And our churches are essential. What she is doing, and we all know it, she's picking winners and losers. And our businesses are suffering. How many of you have a business that has suffered through this, has been impacted? And think of the families who are connected to your business. Think of the employees who are connected to your businesses. We are all suffering, we're in this together, but you know what? We need to continue to push back. Penobscot County, where I'm from in Bangor, we're not open yet. And you know how many cases? 15. We've had, we've had one death, which is horrible. I mean, I don't wish that on anybody, but there are about 90 cases, okay? And we're shutting down an entire county for that. And we've shut down the entire state. We're ruining people's lives. We have 25 signs over there. I hope you'll see them as you walk in front of the state house. 25 signs with names on the front and the back of businesses that have closed. They're six feet under. And multiply that by the families that are affected by those businesses closing. I talked to somebody who is a who sells cars. And he's here today, and I'm not sure where he is, but he's lost 25% of his income just because of the month of April. They were shut down completely. And many of us are losing our incomes. You know, we're not, not only are our incomes impacted, but our preventative services, dentist office. You know, we need to open those back up. How come salons can be open, yet dentist office can't? You know, tattoo parlors can't. It doesn't make sense. So thank you everybody for being here today. It's your voices that matter. It's not mine right now. I do want to go to Washington and I will fight for you and I will be a voice. But right now it's your voice that matters, every single one of you. So continue to speak up and continue to just be here fighting for your rights on the 30th. I hope to see you here too. As long as this goes on, we'll fight back. And one other thing, um, I'm carrying this card right now because Heidi, she's somewhere in our crowd. Just last week, I submitted an op-ed to the Bangor Daily News on mental health. There's so many Mainers who are affected with anxiety, depression, PTSD, and this whole quarantine is making matters worse. There are many people who suffer from anxiety, depression, I know I have in the past, so I shared my story. It's okay to talk about this. We need to release the stigma and in fear surrounded by mental health. And we need to talk about mental health awareness. There's a woman in the crowd, it's actually Larry Dumphy's daughter, and her name is Heidi, and she works for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. She has some resources available, and I just wanted to give her a shout out. If you see her walking around, please uh, say hello to her. She is a voice, um, and she can, if you know of somebody, or if you struggle yourself, reach out to her. Again, it's the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. There is a chapter here in Maine, which I didn't even know about. So let's, let's try to release the stigma and fear around mental health and not be afraid to talk about it because we do, we, we're all in this together. So thank you, Larry. Okay, thank you very much, Adrian. We also have uh, Senator Eric Brinke that would like to say just a couple of words on what he has seen in his travels. Uh, Senator. Thank you, Larry, and thank you for, for, thank you for everyone coming out today. I'm Eric Brakey. It's good to see you all. You know, here we are. It is 2020. We are celebrating. We're supposed to be celebrating 200 years of our free Maine, our independence, our, our, our freedom from Massachusetts. And here we are instead on the 200th anniversary. We're begging for our freedoms back again that we're supposed to be celebrating. This isn't how it's supposed to be done. You know, in America, in Maine, we're supposed to have decisions made 
by the people, by our elected representatives. Instead, we have decisions being made in a dictatorial fashion by one person in that house right over there. And that's not how we're supposed to do things. We the people, we the people have had no input. Decisions being made over our health, our jobs, our very basic freedoms and liberties as main people, and it's time to make a difference. Because she can shut us down, but she can't shut us up. You know, to, at the founding of this country, main people and independence. We've been fighting for it for generation after generation and we're here today because we're still fighting for it right now. In, se in 1776, when the shot heard around the world at, at Lexington and Concord made its... Yeah, is this better? All right. Hopefully this mic won't cut out anymore. The shot heard around the world at Lexington and Concord made its... the sound made its way up north to Machias, Maine. The people of Machias, Maine, a small logging town, dependent on trade with the British military, selling their lumber, they said, we're not going to have any part of this anymore. The British were pretty upset about this, so they sent a warship up to Machias, Maine, and they saw in the town square something the people had erected, a liberty pole. A liberty pole declaring their freedom and independence from the people, uh, fr from, from the British government. Now that warship, the captain on the warship saw that liberty pole there and said, you better take that liberty pole, we're going to bombard the town. But did the main people take that liberty pole down? No, of course not. Did they hide in their homes and wait for the British to go away? No, of course not. That's what main people, that's not what main people do. They did what main people did. They grabbed their axes and they charged the ships. They won the first, they won the first naval battle of the American Revolution and we've been fighting for freedom and independence every day. Business owners here in Maine who are standing up and saying we're not going to sit down and shut up. We're the ones charging the ships. People like Rick Savage, people like who've been following his lead across the state of, the state of Maine. I've seen so many businesses following Rick's lead and saying come and try to stop us. So I want to thank everyone for coming out today. She can shut us down, but she can't shut us up. Let's fight for a free Maine. Okay, um, Mr. Savage would like to make one more point. I think there's someone that he wants to point out who has also been struggling uh, from a business standpoint. So, Rick. I'd like to have Paul Zimmerman from the Red Maple Inn come out. Paul's been going through the same thing I've been going. It's harassing him every day. They were there giving him fines when he was at my restaurant. So they've just been in there harassing him. I won't words about what he's been going through. We owe it to this guy here, Rick Savage. Give him a big hand. He's the guy that got me started. Um, May 1st after Tucker Carlson come on. I know I have to get a hold of this guy. Um, so we've been on the phone back and forth. I probably bumped the shit, uh, um, ship out of it. Um, I just want to say, yes, I've been getting ticketed two tickets a day. Every day they show up at my restaurant. I took the stools off my back porch, which is in Guilford, Maine, on the way to Moosehead Lake. I took all the tables, stools, I have an adjoining piece of property that I own. I moved the tables and chairs over there. I, well, I didn't. The, the, the patrons all took them over there before the state came the first day. So I guess our right to assemble is gone because they were writing me up for that. Um, I was going against the governor's orders. I don't even think I like the governor. Nobody does. Um, so every weekend it's been t health, uh, health and human services come yesterday. The first day they everything was good. It was they didn't find anything wrong. Yesterday they showed up now out on my own private property. They 
move if you don't move the people off your private property that we're gonna licenses. So I said, all right, take my licenses, we gotta do this. So I'm pretty good at fast thinking sometimes. I said, so what are you gonna do when I'm moving across the street in the town parking lot? You know, that's public. It was nothing they could do. Get in your car, go back to wherever you work around here. I've had enough, people. I hope you have too. Keep the fight strong. And again, a big thank you to Rick Savage for getting me cranked up. I think we do owe a lot to Rick Savage, but I would also suggest that you owe a, a bit of gratitude to to uh, Representative Johansson for, and, and uh, Representative DeVoe uh, for actually taking the step as sitting legislators. It's pretty harmless to us who have served because we're not running for anything. But these candidates who, who are, or these representatives who are serving truly have taken a, a risk uh, and a step forward. So I think we owe them a bit of uh, applause as well. So thank you. And speaking about past serving legislators, uh, Representative uh, Shiraki has a little bit. We're sort of going to shift a little bit from from business to some of the negative impacts on health care. So.